onye na eti ma okpo na eti anu was our family and friends welcome to the woke nation our nation of factual truth we are we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear without favor and without fence and we are we encourage us to live our lives live it well through the knowledge of factual truth because it's our lives and personally i encourage you no matter what enjoy your life it is actually your life you are not born to live for someone else and you are not you are not living to die for someone else i'm happy that um, you know some africans are waking up you know like people that are starting to question some uh, proverbs or some sayings our people used to call wise sayings or the sayings of our elders or word of god or word of whatever so you see people now some of them use true question to question to question question to question it they ask question remember how i started i used to ask question blah 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 then from there i take it up and say the factual truth and that's one of the ways we awaken and they grow in knowledge you question everything and the worship nothing because you are not born to worship you are born to live you are not born to serve you are born to live so you have to live and in living your life you're supposed to know you don't that is the you don't need any other thing called purpose. What is your aim for living? What is your aim for being alive? You're not supposed to have one. And that's how people create problems for themselves or by listening to certain people because certain people will drive you crazy. And uh, you think they are right, especially your parents. Uh, your, your some people you, you call your leaders in the society or you call them authority. So you are like, whatever they say is the authority. And they are actually ruin, ruining your life. They are actually destroying your life. And you are the one giving them that chance. You don't supposed to do that. Don't let anyone ruin your life. Okay? So I tell you this, what the crowd seek. Yeah, I just want to share, uh, if you remember one time, was, I think it was last week, I shared, uh, either last week or last two weeks, I shared a, a message which I titled, uh, Too Much Blessings. Why you see our people, you know, jumping from spirituality to religion or jumping from one belief system to another. They too much blessing, they want to be, they want, they're looking for blessing. Blessing every, blessing every, they are looking for blessing. So too much of blessing make them they don't see their own values they don't see that they are the ones making things happen and they begin to ascribe it to uh imaginary beings or to some some someone else some of them think it's a must you have a master it's a must you have somebody you are looking up to nobody has two heads so why should you think so you, the person you think that are, that is greater than you may be below you. Let me use that word. But in nature, no one is be, be, be above you. No one is below you. What's up, HSN? So, things that make people, you know, hold on to their belief, no matter what you are saying, they hold it. Why it is hard for taste, people that believe in God, people that believe in the supernatural, people that believe in the higher being, why is it hard for them to stop flocking together as victims? See them still going to church. See them still going to mosque. See them still going to the temple. See them still going to the program. See them still going to the seminars. See them still going. And you see mostly black people, they like speak to us, speak to me, speak to me. That's why they will tell you their ancestors speaking to them. God speaking to them. Blah, blah, speaking to them. They don't know that them themselves, they are those things they think that is outside them. Inside out, you are one and you have power. 
You are powerful. You don't need any God. You don't need any other to guide you but yourself. I told you that everyone that wants you to follow them, that wants you to believe them, all they are targeting is your potentials. You have great potentials naturally. It's not spiritual. It is not religious. It is not mysterious. It is natural. All you need is to activate your brain with your common sense. I told you there's no force that is greater than your common sense. Your common sense will teach you better. But what makes these people? You, you, they see the evidence. They see the obvious that these people are making them. These people are sucking them dry. Yet, they are going in mass. You see them gathering. And when you tell them, you are jealous. You are this. Leave us alone. Believe what you believe. But the reason why we not leave you alone, because they did not leave us alone when they brought that lies. If they mind their business and we remain our own, we won't be Christians today, we'll be, we won't be Muslims today, we won't be Jews today. We won't be talking about holy book or all this nonsense place of worship they are building and making our people to go there. Imagine an, an African man taking his entire family to a church or to a mall or to a religion. That means you put all your eggs in one basket. And that's why the families are suffering in Africa today. The crowd, what the crowd seek, I want to show you. The crowd, it said in, in John chapter 1, from verse 20, uh, I think 35 to 39, it said that the next day, John the Baptist stood with his two disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. Remember, John the Baptist is their leader already, right? Leading them. Now, he saw Jesus and he said, This is the Lamb of God. He did not ask his disciples to follow Jesus. But look at what the disciples did. The two disciples of John the Baptist heard John the Baptist speak and they followed Jesus. I mean, they heard Jesus speak. They followed Jesus. <laughs> they left John, followed Jesus, jumping from one leader to another, jumping from one faith to another, jumping from one denomination to another, jumping from one religion to another, jumping from one spirituality to another. They are not growing in knowledge. That's why they say that these people are giving to falsehood, you know, always learning, but unable to come to the knowledge of factual truth. They had him speak and they followed him. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, Jesus turned, seeing them following and said to them, I told you before, if you don't believe their lies, they will not exploit you. They will not take advantage of you. They will not take your time. They will not take your money. It's because you are following, you have made yourself a follower. Anyone that speaks what trees you, you follow that one. Until that one dies, you hear another one, you follow, another, you follow that one. Some people have attended, uh, not attended, have become full membership of different denominations. Full membership. And in each of them, they are committed. You see them doing everything even more spiritual or more holy than their leaders. Jesus turned and seen them. Jesus said to them, what do you seek? See, that's what I'm showing you. What they taste, what the crowd, what the believers, what people that believe in the supernatural and the supreme being, or that what they seek, actually. They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, when translated, teacher, where are you staying? <laughs> told you they are so committed they don't play with their faith and so many of them are genuine like when I was a, while following I was genuine and he said he said to them come and see how I wish every time I read this play I say how I wish believers will begin to apply they say come and see not come and believe come and see 
not come and become members. Then whether you don't see, don't don't worry, just keep believing. He said, come and see, and they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about 10th hour. They remained with him. <laughs> they did not go back to John. They said, no, this one is better. I have had him. He got the word. He got the rema. <laughs> they abandoned John and followed Jesus. This is why you're supposed to understand that the, the crowd are seeking for the impossible. What is impossible? They believe, oh, this is impossible with men. Men cannot do this. It's only God that can do that. Men cannot know. It's only God. I was follow, I, I'm following anyone that is following the real God. That's why Paul say in the Bible, follow me as I follow Christ. They are followers. But you don't supposed to be followed. Followers are sheep animals. You're not supposed to be like them. They are seeking for the impossible things that are not real. So the common took advantage of them and begin to sell to them things that are not real and collecting their money, wasting their time. Many family has prayed, waited, fasted, and died in denominations. And some of some of those families have people like us that escape it. We didn't want that to continue with us. We say, no, 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 I'm not continuing with this. I'm no longer a Muslim. I'm no longer a Christian. I'm no longer a Jew. I'm no longer religious. I'm no longer spiritual. I want to live like human being in every religion, in every belief system, in spirituality. It is people making things happen. Not any God, not any supernatural force. It is people. You say something happened. I don't understand it, but it happened. Oh, is it everything that happened? You understand that you don't understand it. Should not make it make. Uh, should not make it your God. It must be God. Who, who said that? Somebody came and dropped money on the table. You don't. He didn't see the person, but it's somebody like you that dropped it. Then you see. Say it is, must be God that provided it. It's not. You don't know. But somebody places, then you come out. You are begin to apply your faith there. You begin to slap your God on it. It is it, it must be God that provided it. So the first thing that is not real that every taste, every follower of whatever they call spiritual seek is God, the non-existent God, the worthless God, the useless God. This God is useless to them in reality. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 20, they say that this God said to Moses, You know, you cannot see my face, but for anyone that sees me will die. He cannot live. We are not playing. Moses say, I have seen the Lord, I do not die. <laughs> or he said, I will show you my back. But he said, If anyone sees you, that person will die. Whether it's to see your back, whether it's to see your head, whether it's to see your hand, although it's a spirit, but this spirit gets human body. <laughs> Anthropomorphism. That's what they are practicing. So you see, they are seeking this God because it is written somewhere. God says you should seek his face. Seek the face of the Lord. And the Psalm, Psalm 27 verse 8 says that when the Lord says, seek my face, I say, yeah, face will I seek. No, God, it is written. It's not any God saying that God, no God has shown up to tell anyone to seek his face. But you see people seeking God's face. Although in the same book, God said that you cannot see my face. And anyone that see me will die, cannot live. Yet people are dedicating their time because they're seeking for the impossible. They believe they, they can still see it. Of course, you see a place like uh, Jeremiah chapter, uh, chapter 29 verse 13. He said, if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. The God they say that is invisible. The God they say that is a spirit. No one can see. No eye can see him. He said that no man can see him and live. Then the same God said that if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. It's a lie that men made up. And people believe it because they wrote it and tell you it is the word of God. I say if, it's, if this your God is alive, you don't need any book to tell you his will or his word. 
if you are a parent, how do you communicate with your children? Do you write book for your children to follow? You wrote that book before they were born, and now they are, they are born. They grow to age of reading and learning. Then they will be reading the book to know, okay, this is the world, world, will of my father. This is the will of my mother for me. My mother want me to shower today. My father, no. They talk to you directly. If you are God, it's like, oh, the ways of the Lord is not the ways of no, You are stupid. It is man that still wrote that thing. Anything you are saying about God was taught. People taught you that. People wrote that. It is not any God. When people were writing with stone, they say that God wrote on the on the tablet of stones. Then people, Egyptians, they find oh, papyrus now they can write with the book. God also have a book. To this day, they had the book of life in heaven. <laughs> a God that did not have book or the human being invented book. That's when that God have book. Read it. John 1 18 said, No one has seen God at any time, including Jesus. Jesus had not seen God at any time in there. He said, uh, uh, he said only who was in his bosom, not he can has not seen God face to face. Say so he has come to declare it. Declare God. That's what people have been doing, declaring God, because God is mere word, a mere word that people made up. Another thing these people seek that is impossible is blessing, divine approval, happiness, divine happiness, divine well-being, divine prosperity. It is impossible. Such thing does not exist. There's no such thing as blessing of God or God blessing you. No way. It can never happen. God blesses no one. If there is anyone that can bless you, it is you. When you are walking, you are blessing yourself using their word. But I don't know when I walk, I'm not blessing myself. I'm better than myself. I don't need blessing. I need to be better. I need to do better. I don't need any blessing. I don't need blessing of God or blessing of man. It's a it's empty word. It is impossible. There is no such thing as divine blessing, divine happiness, divine well-being, divine prosperity. Divine boon, I'm giving so I can have divine blessing, abundance. I pay tight, I give offering so I can have abundance. It does, it can never happen. You can never have all those things they tell you divine blah, 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 divine promotion, divine intervention. It can never have them. It does not exist. That's why they also seek what? Goodness and mercy. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us. Ah, the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Uh, but Jesus has fulfilled the Old Testament. Why are you still dwelling in the house of the Lord? Did Jesus build any house for you to dwell in? Jesus said his body is that house. So why are you building one saying, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord? For if you are in Christ, you don't need to dwell in the house of the Lord again. You're already in him. So why are you going to church? Why are you going to house fellowship? Why are you deceiving yourself that the Lord is in the midst of you? When he's not, you cannot see because he never existed. They said, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. <laughs> There is no goodness, there is no mercy of any God that follows anyone. They always tell me, God, have mercy on you. I say, trust that useless God, you don't have anything. I don't need anything from any God. Goodness and mercy. In other words, kindness and relief. That's what they're looking for. A relief, elevation of distress, elevation of poverty. That's why they keep going. And they keep sucking them dry. They keep going. One of them from my town, Umuchu, he, you know, he always attacked me. He said, I'm attacking Christianity and the ministers of God. So this, that post I made about uh, the pastor in the northern part of Nigeria that uh, kidnapped himself and is, uh, take money from his church members twice. He said, that guy said, but you, uh, you open church in America, we, we don't have member. That's why you're attacking Christianity. Number one, I never open church in America. The only place I opened church was in Nigeria, Lagos. And I was Christian before I left it for business. I was still a Christian. I came to America as a Christian. 
but that's what things do because they they are seeking empty things so they will use empty words also or empty things try to not they, they know that cannot stop somebody like me but they try to make other people say oh no no it's a fake you don't need to tell somebody that i am fake i am here i'm public everything i'm doing is public i used to say that even if i sleep with your wife it's not a sin so long she agree with me we have sex it's not a, you say bring it that's nonsense there's nothing you will bring out now you will show me that now it's a lie what is that if i do something wrong they catch me okay then i take responsibility of it i will not say it's the devil or it's your god i did that but they think it's a it's, it's, it's a joke oh no he don't know what he's doing he don't know what he bullshit i don't know what i'm doing because you are stupid you are blind i'm not doing it for you and i'm happy doing it i'm not depending on you i'm not wasting my time and my money like you in the name of god no goodness and mercy is following anyone it will never you can say it all you want i was saying it until i left christianity if goodness and mercy is following you as you repeat it every time you go to church, there's no way you'll be, be in need, lack and want. You will have everything you need. Another reason they go for what is, you know, they seek is miracles, signs and wonders, supernatural intervention. You don't know how God was, it will work. No, it will never happen. If you read Matthew chapter 24, Verse, from verse 23 to 26, Jesus said this thing there to his disciples according to what is written. He said, I'm forewarning you because time will come. When false prophets will come, they will deceive many because, you know, they will uh, perform miracles, signs and wonders. Even the elect will be deceived. You know, being elect is bullshit. No one is choosing no one anyone that tell you they are choosing they are liars don't listen to them jesus said to them when somebody tell you he's there or christ is there he said do not go out believers when you tell them that is in the bible they say no it's not there they, they quote uh, hebrew chapter 10 20 uh, i think is it 27 that has nothing to do with gathering together in a place for worship you have everything to do with rapture when they believe they will rapture bodily to meet in the air and be with the Lord forever. Jesus said, when they tell you the Lord is there, out there, he said, do not go out and do not believe it. That's what Jesus said, right there. But they don't want that part of the Bible. No. Jesus said, do not go out to the place of worship and do not believe the words of prophets, of preachers, of teachers, those who are preaching the Lord. The Lord said this. The Lord told me. The Lord revealed to me. Said, do not believe it. Do not believe it. When they tell you Jesus Christ is the Lord, he said, do not believe it. He said, 24, Matthew 24, 4 to 5. He said that many, many, many shall come in his name saying he is the Christ and they will deceive many. And when you read that same Matthew 24, verse 11, he said that many prophets will rise and deceive many. See them. When you see the crowd gathering, they are deceiving the crowd. If you want to scatter the crowd, tell them the truth. The truth is hard sayings to them. They, no, they say, no, I cannot take this. This is hard saying. No, they, were, they abandoned Jesus in John chapter 6. So when you see the gathering like that, yeah, you see, when they arrested Jesus in the Bible, they abandoned him too. They are not seeking for truth. They are seeking for the impossible. Make bread to multiply. Walk on the water. I want you to perform miracles. Perform it. Raise the dead. And I want to see it. Things that are impossible in reality. That's why the, what the thesis are seeking. So they ignore fast. They ignore reality. No matter how much you presented it to them. It's not that you are raw. It's not that you maybe you are you are rude. It's not that you are trying to force anything on them. No, it is the, for the fact what they are seeking. You are trying to make them to question. They say no, no, oh no, no, no. You are devil. You are going to distract me. The Bible said in the last days, 
Hey, blah, 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 come, deal with this thing. If you are among the crowd, you are already deceived. I cannot deceive you because you're already deceived. If you're a Christian, I cannot deceive you. You're already deceived. I am waking you up because I was once a Christian. The same thing applies to whoever is in any religion you, you are in. You are deceived in that religion. Oh, no, another one they seek is a savior. Oh, no, let me, the savior is the last one. The grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit is within church goers a lot. After they say, surely goodness and message as well as other days, they said, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. If you read your Bible very well, you will see that in some places they say God is two. That's Father and the Son. And as well, they say that it is three. The Father did. Because when you, when you say that the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and you mention God, dear Father, Son, dear Jesus, right? But when you read 1 John chapter 1, he said that we know we have our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. How about the Holy Spirit? How about the Holy Spirit? He said, no, the Father and the Son, Jesus and the, and the Holy Spirit, they are one. Amen. So if they are one, why are you mentioning the Father and the Son? Huh? <laughs> yeah. This is what they are seeking. The grace of our Lord Jesus. I need that grace. Grace. I'm aging in grace or by grace. How do they do? And you see how that thing spread like wildfire. Anytime they make up some, those silly words, it's prayed. What God cannot do can, does not exist. It's a, it's, a, it's a spread. You are aging with grace, as with grace or in grace. It's spreading. Even people that say they don't believe in God, they say, yeah, I'm aging with grace. I'm aging with grace. Age with grace. You age with grace. <laughs> I tell them grace, his grace is a disgrace in disguise. Look at Africans who have been receiving the grace of God. They are living in penury. The love of God. Oh, oh man, Africans, they deceive us too long that we think grace is nice word, love is nice word, and the Holy Ghost fellowship or Holy Spirit fellowship is nice word. They are slavery words. You don't need love. You don't need love. Talk, not, talk, not, not to talk about the love of God you have not seen. Oh, God loves you. God loves me. God loves you. I can go in. Yeah, God loves me. You don't know when God will remember me. Excuse me. You don't know when God will remember you. He forsake you. And now you are going, trying to win his attention or to get his attention to remember you. It doesn't matter you have been suffering. One day God will remember you. That's stupidity. You don't see a father waiting to remember his children. You don't see a mother waiting to remember her children. No. Even when the children are fast asleep, the parents are thinking what to do to better their lives, to keep them safe. God is stupid. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of God. And those of you that believe I'm a courtist, or maybe one day I will preach Jesus, I keep telling you, I keep preaching Jesus every day. There's no day that passes by that I don't preach about Jesus, I don't preach about God. Listen, I have this in me. I spend years studying about God, about Jesus, about everything Christianity. I spend years, I spend money, I invested money heavily in it. You think I will throw it away because you're upset? Telling you that God is non-existent, useless, and worthless to you. Jesus never existed. That's why you cannot see Jesus today. You cannot see God today. And you slap it also with the Holy Spirit. What Holy Spirit? Holy Ghost. That's why they give you that, that spell, ghost spell, and you are living under it. Then the, the last thing they seek is a savior. He will come and say, say to the weary land, he will shall come. He will come and say, giving them false hope. God will come and save you. 
Jesus will come and save you. The Holy Spirit will come and save you. Angel of God will come and save you. You see them expecting a savior. Then when they hear people going to native daughter, they say, no, it's evil. Why are you seeking that? Seeking one only through God. A woman in America here asked me, do you believe in God? I said, which one? <laughs> I said, which one? Because I learned it from someone. I learned it from uh, our ancestor, Dr. Ben. When they asked him uh, about like Bible or God, he said, which one? Because we have thousands of them. So which one are you talking about? He said, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, okay. I know that Africans have a God before uh, the God of the Bible and the bullshit. So she's a Christian. That's why she asked me that. And that's why he said, I have to get them today because I'm, I'm not a Christian. They're looking for God-fearing men. I'm not a God-fearing man. I slay God. I kill God. I'm a God killer. I don't fear any God. <laughs> yeah? They're looking for a savior. Job 22, they are looking for a savior. Psalm 121, where does my help come from? Come from Abu. A savior is coming. It's coming. It's not coming. No one is coming to save you. You don't need salvation. You don't need deliverance. You don't need all that nonsense they're telling you. This is why you see the crowd, the slaves, gathering everywhere and seeking what is wrong. They are not seeking the right thing. The right thing they're supposed to be seeking is knowledge. I need to know. He said, come and see. Not come and believe. Not come and wish. Not come and hope. Not come and love. No, come and see. If you don't see it, don't, don't go back. Get out. But you don't see, you keep going. Believing without seeing. Hoping without seeing. Loving without seeing. Even fearing without seeing. And preaching without seeing. God, you have nothing you are preaching. The crowd are under the spell and the control of their master, their teacher, their leader, their slave owner. They are under that person, that woman, spare. And you see that they can kill you because of that leader. But knowledge of factual truth separates you from the crowd. The crowd are slaves of men. They are slaves of imaginary God. They don't see what they believe. They don't see what they hope. They don't see what they love they don't see what they preach they don't see what they teach they only believe and hoping one day it will happen it will never happen so i'm calling you africans to seek the right thing seek knowledge let's say you so much you know in that belief begin to seek knowledge in it this thing you tell me what you know wh when did it happen okay you say this thing will happen what date will it happen because god's supposed to know all things so if god is speaking to any prophet god's supposed to tell them the exact time the exact date it will happen if they tell you keep hoping it will happen they will keep collecting from you that's why i say that they seek the impossible things that are not real so come in to advantage of that or take advantage of that taking their money from them getting buying private jets building mansions for themselves sending children their children to the best schools enriching their children willing all their riches to their children why the poor masses the crowd are like bees gathering their hand and they are being slaughtered deliver yourself today and live humanly this life is great it's beautiful you can enjoy it Pardon? <laughs>